Well, uh, welcome back. I was just letting the Lena Valley crew here know that that song actually has come out of Nigeria. Uh, it's one of the, the first songs to come out of Africa that has taken uh, the Christian world at least uh, by storm. It's one of the, the top songs sung through uh, 2019 uh, in the world. Uh, it's good to have you with us wherever you are. And if you, if you are with us, please pull out your Bibles uh, because we're going to launch into the first part of our message this morning. And uh, as we do, we're continuing our journey in the book of James. Uh, it's nice to be here. Like I, So far I've been doing messages with, uh, sometimes with my wife and with other people just you know, standing in the middle of nowhere. It's nice to be back in church and to be looking at the Bible together. Um, and we're picking up from last week. And the, and the last thing James has said to us at the end of chapter 3 is that peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Now he's going to change gears and get a little bit personal now. Uh, uh, some people are going, uh, you know, get a little bit personal. He's been personal right the, right the way through. Uh, but uh, if, if you turn with me to James chapter 4 verse 1, uh, one, of the, one of the great uh, techniques, if you are going to speak uh, anywhere, is to ask a rhetorical question. The, the job of a rhetorical question isn't to get people to give you answers out loud, but to get them to go down and work out what's going on for them. And so that's exactly what James does at the start of uh, chapter 4. He says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? What causes fights and quarrels among you? Good question, isn't it? What, what does? One of, the, um, one of the things we see right the way through the New Testament is that God's heart is for the church to be one. And this is what Jesus prayed for us. But has, has anybody uh, experienced... Uh, fights and quarrels even in the church? Is it, do you think it's possible that even in the church there might even be a fight or a quarrel from time to time? <laughs> um, so it, it seems that for James this is, this is obviously an important thing he's wrestling with. He's, he's, really, he's very keen for us to work out what is it that is causing the fights and quarrels. Sometimes there are fights that are right to have but often the fights we have are more about something else and he, he puts his finger on it and says uh, don't they come from your desires that battle within you, from your feeling world, from your sense that things are not as they should be and if everyone would just listen to you, everything would be a lot better. Does that sound familiar at all? <laughs> Thanks, Julie. It's nice to be back with a real audience. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, your desires are actually far more important than your thoughts. Your desires are far more important than your thoughts. By the way, for those watching at home or those uh, here at Lena Valley or at Mornington, you can get the notes or, of course, uh, we've got the, the Winyard crew with us still, which is it's great to be travelling this journey with you. Um, you can get the notes for today's sermon on the YouVersion Bible app. That's, they're, they're available there. Um, the most important question of your life is not what thoughts you have, but who or what you love. The most important question of your life is who or what you love, who or what you desire, because that determines your actions far more. In fact, all the neuro re neuroscience is backing up Turns out what the Bible's been saying this whole time. So Jesus was less interested in people who had all the right ideas and much more interested in people who, who, whose heart was right, who cared the right way. James goes on uh, in just a minute, but you can see this is a theme. Uh, a lot of commentators um, uh, believe that this kind of thing that James was saying was something that the early church said over and over again and thought that it was uh, a core part of the, the teaching of the early church, because we can see it almost word for word in Peter. Uh, 1 Peter 2.11, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from the sinful desires which wage war against your soul. 
that your, your feeling world is the site of the biggest battleground of your life. The things you love are actually the, the, the battleground of your life. James um, he, he picks this and he, he, it's, it's, he's way to the middle of the letter to, to try and fo- help us focus. And, and I think it's interesting, a, a lot of, this, at, at the moment, a lot of neuro research and science of the way the brain works is coming together with what the Bible teaches and, helps in, and helping us understand that uh, getting the right set of ideas is far less important in living a right life than loving the right thing. It's the people and things you love that shape you. Uh, uh, An author I really respect by the name of James K.A. Smith says, our wants and longings and desires are at the core of our identity, the wellspring from which our actions and behaviour flow. Our wants reverberate from our heart, the epicenter of the human person. Thus, scripture counsels, above all else, guard your heart, for everything else flows from it. Discipleship, we may say, is a way to curate your heart, to be attentive and intentional about what you love. So it's interesting that the, 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 the way of thinking about discipleship is it's about thinking and being intentional about what you love and what order you place your loves in. So James says, let's talk about how you, why this is the way it is. He says, you desire, but you don't have, so you kill. Now, for most of us, we won't in our lives actually physically kill a person. Uh, but for most of us, we will kill relationships. There's a, even a, a saying that sort of overdramatic people use that say, you're dead to me. Uh, but we can back off and distance ourselves from the people that cause us pain. We can kill relationships when people don't agree with us. You covet, but you can't get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You, you want things to be different. You want stuff, you want... You, you want money, you want influence, you want people to listen to you, and so you quarrel and fight. And James goes on and says, you don't have because you don't ask God. But when you do ask God, he says, you don't receive because you ask with the wrong motives. Again, God is much more interested in your heart than in your words. That you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. So what's he saying? Is your motives are your feeling world, your desires, and you order your life on your feeling world. We live in a world that says you should follow what you love. You should follow your desires and define yourself by your desires. But the Bible is telling us we need to evaluate what we love because loving the wrong thing leads to death. And even loving right things but in the wrong order leads to death. It is right to love the the work you do. It is right to love your family. It is right to love sport. But if any of that stuff takes God's place, then it becomes serious. The central and most, question, most important question of your life is what do you love and who do you love? It is uh, interesting that James now gets very personal and, and he uses the term, you adulterous people. And this is, it's like, this is God speaking to us. And, 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 he, and the term adulterous, he actually uses the feminine for, f- form there for everybody, male and female. And, and that, he's picking up an Old Testament theme that, that we need to hear. It's, it's right the way through the Old Testament, there's this picture of God's people being like his bride. And 
and when they go after other gods, when they love other things, he calls it adultery, like Jeremiah 3.20, when, like a woman unfaithful to her husband, so you, Israel, have been unfaithful to me, declares the Lord. A central question is what things in your life take God's place? What things in your life are a higher priority than your relationship with God? This is why James is getting personally saying, this is so important. This is so important. The most important question in your life is who and what do you love? And if it, the answer to that is anything but God, then that stuff will be your poison. James says, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? And again, here, one of the challenges for us is we're reading the New Testament through uh, 21st century eyes. And so for us, friendship is uh, something that happens on Facebook uh, and you get Facebook friends and you just click a button and you... Has anyone got Facebook friends they don't actually know? Uh, oh, fessing, fessing up time, yeah, okay. Uh, that's not what he means. That's not what he means uh, by friends. In the, the Greco-Roman world at this stage, to use the word friend meant a relationship where uh, your priorities and your heart and all that you own were available to your friend. It's that level of commitment. It wasn't. It's, so it's where your your heart is given to somebody else. Is kind of the, the word for what the, that word for friendship means. Um, in, that, so that's when he's saying friendship with the world means you've given the world your priorities. You've given the world your priorities rather than God your priorities. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs, this is God talking to you, he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us. But he gives us more grace. Do you get that? God longs for relationship with you. And that there is a beautiful part of you created in the image of God that also longs for God. Blaise Pascal said that inside every person is a God-shaped vacuum. That there's part of you that is only free when you are open to the God of the universe. And you don't have to put on an act. Isn't that good news? Jesus was tough on the religious people who were, who were obeying all the laws. And he kept saying, no, it's about the heart. God longs for a relationship with you from your spirit. But the beautiful part of you created the image of God. As James says, God opposes the proud, opposes people who want to organise the world around their own priorities and gives grace to the humble. Romans 8.16 says, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Do you get that? The Holy Spirit talks with our spirit, that same spirit that God longs for. It was really important for me to discover that human beings have a spirit. Because I, growing up in church, I heard a lot about the Holy Spirit. I didn't hear a lot about the fact that we have a human spirit. And that, that human spirit, the God's breath in us, that gives us understanding, as Job says, is beautiful. But it's that part that knows God. And it's beyond your cognition. that you, Somehow you've got to learn to listen to your heart and know that that part of you just wants to be free. We're going to, in the foundations course, we're going to be talking more about the spirit uh, in, in the coming weeks and how important it is to, to learn to be yourself, not to put on an act. But isn't that good news? God wants relationship with you. He doesn't, he doesn't want you to put on an act. He wants you to be you. And he doesn't want to be second best. And whenever you have something in your life that is more important to you than God, that same thing will be a problem for you. 
So in, I'm just going to pray, and in a moment we're going to move into our small group time, our discussion time. And this will be an interesting one. The discussion question is going to be this. Uh, what in your life, what are some of the things that can sometimes take priority over God? What are some of the things that you can love more than God? Uh, like if, if, if that's not true for you if, you, if God is always your number one and your priorities are always right, you're going to find this a very boring discussion. Uh, you may want to talk to a psychologist or something afterwards as well, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we, 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 we want to create some space, and, and it's, but it is going to take some courage to see if you can identify for yourself what some of these things James would be wanting to talk to us about are. So Jesus, as we come now to our discussion time, just help us. Help us get a sense of what it is you'd be wanting to say to us. We ask this in your name.